Well, I have a real treat for us today. Not only are we off to the resting place of the first King of Unified England, but also the supposed capital, or at least one of the capitals, of England. Malmesbury. Malmesbury is located in the heart of the Cotswolds in Wiltshire. It is also England's oldest borough. The town is sited on a natural peninsula above where streams meet to form the second of two rivers called Avon that flow through the county. Despite its height, it does not lack springs, so it can easily be used for settlement. Recent excavations on the east side of Malmesbury showed that it had been an early Iron Age hill fort dating back to 800 BC. It made use of the natural topography, covering up to 40 acres, and was surrounded by 10 feet thick stone ramparts. The strongly fortified settlement is believed to have been the main centre of a tribal group that eventually federated with its neighbours to form the Kingdom of the Dabuni. The town probably had a population of just a few hundred, sheltering behind a mile and a half of stone defences. The inhabitants would have lived in stone or timber thatched roundhouses and likely to have worked in agricultural industries. This Iron Age hill fort would have been a key economic centre, perhaps the most important in the whole southeast Cotswolds region. Examination of air photography data has shown that Iron Age Malmesbury was the centre of a 30 square mile cluster of farms and settlements. The prehistoric town may also have been a religious centre. Within the newly discovered circuit of ramparts, previous archaeological excavations had unearthed evidence of a possible Roman temple directly underneath Malmesbury Abbey. Now that the Iron Age town had been found, archaeologists suspect that the Roman structure was built on an Iron Age predecessor, probably a small Celtic temple dedicated to the worship of a local tribal deity. This raises the possibility that, although Malmesbury ceased to be a main centre of population from between 100 BC to 800 AD, it never stopped being an important religious centre. The buried Iron Age town was discovered by archaeologists from Bristol while English heritage was restoring Malmesbury 13th century medieval town walls. It is one of the few cases in Western Europe in which a medieval town wall follows at least part of the course of its Iron Age predecessor. The town is dominated by the now ruined abbey at its centre. Even before the abbey, it had been the site of various religious buildings. In 603, a nunnery was established, and in 676, the first abbey was founded as a Benedictine monastery built by Aldhelm, the nephew of King Ein of Wessex. The town of Malmesbury grew around the expanding abbey, and under Alfred the Great was made a burr which means fortified town in Anglo-Saxon. In 1145, construction started on the existing abbey that we see today, and in 1180, it was finally consecrated. During the next two centuries, the abbey was expanded, including the addition of a 427-foot spire. This made it 23 feet higher than the one at Salisbury Cathedral which is 404 feet and holds the current record in Britain. Unfortunately, in 1500, the spire was struck by lightning during a storm, 
which led to significant damage to the abbey. Fifty years later, in 1550, the West Tower fell, demolishing the three westernmost bays of the nave. Two-thirds of the abbey was now destroyed, leaving the ruins that we see today. Perhaps the most important of Malmesbury's benefactors was the first king of all England, Alfred the Great's grandson, Athelstan. He reigned between 925 and 940. At the Battle of Brunenburg in 937, King Athelstan of Wessex defeated an army of Northern English and Scots. Helped by many men from Malmesbury, in gratitude he gave the townsfolk their freedom, along with 600 hides of land to the south of the town. The status of free men of Malmesbury was passed down through the generations and remains to this day. The right has only been handed down from father to son or to son-in-law. Members of this old corporation, the warden and free men, are all commoners. They receive equal shares in profits from their land on Malmesbury Common or King's Heath. The free men of Malmesbury still own the land to the south of the town along with dozens of properties, pubs and shops within the town itself, providing affordable housing to townsfolk. The maximum number of commoners is 260. The organisation is said to be the most exclusive club in the world, as to enter it one has to be born to a free man or marry the daughter of one. Since 2000, women were omitted for the first time, the daughters of free men. When a commoner is accepted into the organisation, they undergo an initiation ceremony. A shallow hole is prepared into which the new commoner places a silver coin. The following words are said. Turf and twig I give to thee, as King Athelstan gave to me, a good brother thou shalt be. They are then struck thrice with a twig across their back, and the coin is removed. This has been the way since King Athelstan granted the land in 934. King Athelstan died in 940 at the height of his power and was buried in Malmesbury Abbey. Another famous son of Malmesbury was the great historian William of Malmesbury, 1095 to 1143. He was educated at the now famous Abbey School. One of William's articles tells the story of an 11th century monk called Elmer, who made himself a pair of wings and jumped from the tower of Malmesbury Abbey, flying about 200 metres before crashing to the ground. He broke both his legs, leaving him crippled for life. The injuries did not stop Elmer from planning another attempt. But when the abbot got wind of his plans, he was banned from flying for life. Early in the 12th century, the abbey came under the control of Bishop Roger of Salisbury, who built a Motton Bailey castle close to the abbey. In 1139, the civil war of the anarchy broke out between King Stephen of England and the rival claimant for the throne, the Empress Matilda in which Malmesbury Castle played an active part. In the reign of King John, 1199 to 1216, the local monks petitioned to have the castle destroyed. The king agreed, and it was demolished in 1216. Shortly afterwards, in 1220, an abbey guest house was built upon the castle's foundations. 300 years later, after the dissolution of the abbey in 1539 and the departure of the monks from the building, became an inn offering accommodation to travellers on the road from Bristol to Oxford. The hotel was named the Castle Inn until 1798, when it changed to the Old Bell, which it still retains today. It is the oldest hotel in Britain. In 1539, Henry VIII dissolved the Abbey. It was bought by William Stump, who arranged for it to become the parish church, and it was consecrated as such on the 20th of August, 1541. 
Since then, it has been a place of worship ever since. Between 1642 and 1651, the Abbey was caught up in the tumult of the Civil War. Cannons were hauled up to the top of the remaining West Tower by Royalist soldiers to defend the town from parliamentary assault. Malmesbury is said to have changed hands as many as seven times and the Abbey was fiercely fought over. A grim reminder of the Civil War conflict is a series of musket holes in the south wall of the porch. These holes mark the spot where Royalist prisoners of the war were executed. As the years passed, the building continued to decay. The most significant event was the collapse of the West Tower which left a gaping hole behind what was now the rear of the nave. Thankfully, the situation has been reversed, particularly by restoration work carried out in the early 20th century. The remaining part of the abbey is now in regular use as the parish church. Well, I hope you enjoyed today. I certainly did. Uh, it's it's a marvellous place. Um, thoroughly love the history there. It's got it all going for it. So if you like the vid, hit that like button. And if you haven't already subscribed, feel free to subscribe and uh, ding that notification bell. And I'll see you on the next one. See you, folks. <laughs>